bless you. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness that you've shown us throughout the entire day. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sea, you have been faithful and your name is worthy to be praised. So we bless you today. You get the first word and the last word. You're the beginning and the end. There's nothing before you and nothing after you. You are Alpha and Omega. So we worship you, our Lord. For you are worthy to be praised. Is he worthy, Savior? Is he worthy? You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. If he's worthy of praise, let's lift up some praise to him today. Cause you're 
you in this place tonight thank you for the precious blood of Jesus the perfect lamb thank you father for what you made available to your children through the perfect work the completed work of Christ it's because of that completed work we walk in your grace and your peace and your mercies are new every morning of our, of our lives father Thank you, Father, that because of the completed work of Christ, your children can walk in divine health, divine protection, Father. Every need is met. We have everything that pertains to life and godliness. You even order our steps. We thank you for it, Father. You make the crooked places straight. You're the God who opens doors for us that no one can shut. Thank you for it, Father. We give you glory tonight. It's so good to be in your house, to be in your presence tonight, Father. We don't take it lightly. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you tonight, Father, for the backslider coming home to you, for souls coming into the kingdom, Father, the works of the enemy being defeated and reversed in their lives, Father. You're a good Father, and we thank you, Lord, that eyes would be open to see that, Father. Those who don't know you through Jesus Christ would, would, would understand that you are the Father. You love them, and you take great care of your children. We give you glory for it, Father. Father, we thank you for Pastor and Mrs. Gould, our man and woman of God. Lord, we thank you for your anointing growing even stronger in their lives. Thank you that you're so good that you make sure the right people are always in place to hold up their arms in all capacities. Father, thank you that your hedge of protection is around them. And you deliver them from unreasonable and wicked men. For not all men have faith. And we thank you for it. We continue to speak blessings over them, over their families, over their households. In Jesus' name, we lift up the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophet, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, Father. We receive them as gifts to the body of Christ. We thank you for divine health, divine protection, and provision for the ministry. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray for those in positions of leadership, Father. We cry out for godly leadership in this nation, Father. We cry out for leaders, Father, particularly those in, in our political positions, to understand and know that you are God and beside you there is none other, Father. Thank you that they humble themselves before you, God. We pray for political leaders to understand that the only nations that are blessed 
are the ones whose God is the Lord. And so, Father, we pray for healing in our land. We humble ourselves before you, Father. For those leaders who refuse to acknowledge you, to do what's pleasing in your sight as they go about their affairs, Father, we ask that you remove them from office and replace them with men and women of God, that the word of the Lord would run swiftly and be glorified. It's your word that we need. Father, we bless the nation of Israel. We speak peace into the walls of Jerusalem. And we thank you that the United States will forever be a friend and ally of Israel. And we all know that you bless those who bless Israel. Thank you, Father, for giving Prime Minister Netanyahu wisdom, God, to lead your people, God. You won't let him go astray in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you for our service tonight. We thank you for the uncompromised, anointed word of God going forth unhindered. Thank you again for souls coming into the kingdom. Thank you, Father God, for the backslider coming home to you, the captives being set free. Thank you for the, the Holy Spirit having free reign here today. Father, we just look forward to rejoicing in your presence. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Greet your neighbors and tell them Maranatha. them up tell them hey listen subscribe to uh victim crystal center's youtube channel and get in church tonight live streaming amen? amen all right we love all of you tonight we appreciate you thank you for being in service tonight let's we have a, a few things to bring to your announcement uh, uh to your attention a few announcements to bring to your attention kenyan uh ken i call him ken ken hall uh father passed we mentioned that to you on this past uh, Sunday, Ken Hall, his father passed. The service is in Detroit, Michigan at the Greater Grace Temple Church on this coming Friday. And we want to continue to lift Ken and his family up in prayer. Kenyatta Gallman's grandfather passed. Her grandfather raised her. So that's why we're bringing that to your attention. And we want to lift her, lift her up in prayer. The service is this Saturday at Forest Lawn West Cemetery just a graveside service there. Michael Cornwell, uh, brother passed, his older brother passed, uh, and the service, homegoing celebration service, will be on this Sunday at 2 p.m. at St. Luke No. 1 Baptist Church in Sharon, South Carolina. St. Luke No. 1. I wonder how many numbers they have. How, how far up do they go? But we want to lift up Brother Michael Cornwell and his family. He has some other brothers and sisters, and we want to lift them up in prayer as well. And then Greg Freilon, a member of our church, is in the hospital, and we want to lift him up in prayer. So let's do that. Father, we lift up Ken Hall. God, we thank you for continual strength and ministry of the Holy Spirit to he and his family. We thank you, God, for gracing them with your, with your peace and with your life and, and the healing anointing of the Spirit of God inside of their emotional arena and their soul. We thank you for that. And, Father, we do the same. We lift up Kenyatta Gallman. We thank you for peace and strength and grace being hers and upon her family in Jesus' name. And, Father, our brother Michael, God, Corn well, whose older brother passed, Lord, we, uh, on yesterday. We pray, Father, for strength upon Mike, upon his siblings in the name of Jesus, and Father, that your comfort be theirs and you grace them in a way that only you can do. We call healing throughout these families in the name of Jesus, and we give you the glory for it. We lift up Greg, uh, our, Lord, our brother uh, uh, Freilon, Father, we thank you for the healing power of God flowing in his body, miracles in his body, in the name of Jesus, and we give you glory for it. Amen and amen. All right, let's have our video announcements, please. Good morning, Victory family. Since we began live streaming in March 2020, our YouTube subscribers have doubled, 
our views have been increasing and people have been responding from all over the country. Do you know what happens when an invitation is given during the live stream? Someone on the prayer line receives the call and after praying with the caller, they record the caller's information and then I receive the list of those who have responded to the invitation. I will then mail out the packets to those who responded to the invitation. The same packet that is given to those who come to service in person is mailed out to those who responded virtually. We have sent out packets to people in every region of the country, from places such as Georgia, New York, Colorado, to Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, and many, many more. As you can see through our live stream, we are continuing to touch and change lives for the glory of God. Now here are a few of our ministries upcoming event. In the Know we'll have a session this Friday at 7.30 p.m. This is a members only event. Men 18 years and up, don't miss the relaunch of our Men's Fellowship Breakfast next Saturday, April 24th at 9 a.m. in the Victor Youth Building Gymnasium. Comedian Rod Allison will be there to get us ready to get our laugh on. This breakfast is limited to BCC members only, but guest churches will be joining us. Tickets are just $6 and can be purchased at the Courtesy Booth or online through next Wednesday, April 21st. Get yours today. The Young Men of Valor will be having our next Man Up Day next Saturday, April 24th from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Victory After School Building. Man Up Day is open to all young men from ages 6 to 12. The day will be packed with fun and action-packed activities, all designed to grow your young man in the things of God. Lunch will be provided. Parents, please sign up your young man at the courtesy booth. The deadline to sign up is Wednesday, April 21st. Journey to Joy is sponsoring a spring refresher luncheon for all the widows and widowers of Victory Christian Center. The luncheon has been rescheduled for Saturday, May 1st at 1 o'clock p.m. at our Campus 3 location. Get ready for a presentation, discussion, food, and fun. We are asking for a donation of $15 to offset food costs. Please sign up after service at the booth across from the workshop. The last day to sign up is Sunday, April 25th. Registration begins April 12th for VCC Little King Summer Camp, serving ages 3 to 5. The camp kicks off Monday, June 7th. Weeks are thematic, involving exciting activities such as sports, water games, cooking, and much, much more. The cost is $165 a week and a one-time $35 registration fee. For more information or sign up, call 704-527-6843. The VCC Maintenance Department is hiring for one maintenance worker. Candidates must have maintenance experience, not just general labor. Plumbing or carpentry experience is a plus. If interested, please drop off a resume at church office Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. Or email churchoffice at bccenter.net, attention, maintenance department. Giving online is quick and easy. Go to vccenter.net. Click on the Give tab on the navigation bar in the header. Once on that page, scroll down and there are instructions to show you how to give now. Click on the gold Give Now button and it will take you to the online donation page. There, you can simply fill in the information and submit your donation. If you would like to text to give, text 704-253-8770. Put in your dollar amount without the dollar sign. If this is your first time using this feature, you will receive a link. Click on the link and put in your card information. Finally, wait for a confirmation text. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. What system? What what system? What what system? His spirit save the Lord. Laughter does good like a medicine, but we really do need to be led by his spirit. Stop by the workshop and get your reminder t-shirt today. Thank you for watching the VCC announcements. And don't forget, you can find these announcements, events, and more on the Victory Christian Center Church app. Get it at the Google Play or Apple App Store. All right, praise God. Uh, 
in the know this coming Friday, we mentioned Sunday that it would be held in the youth building, but because it would be better in here for her PowerPoints and the videos and things like that, then we will have in the know here in the dome this Friday evening. We want everyone that attends that to park in the back of the dome, enter through the south entrance, you know, and you'll just come right on into the auditorium. And we're going to confine seating to maybe just this section here, maybe over there, but we will not have you spread out and go back, anything like that, for our cleanup team. We don't want them, you know, they have to, we don't want them cleaning up all over the place. And we'll just have the bathrooms accessible to you in front of you uh, or behind us, I, behind me anyway, on this Friday night. So enter through the back of the auditor, uh, the dome, south entrance, right? Isn't that good? South entrance. All right. And this Friday evening in the know. Uh, also, men, don't forget the breakfast coming up, right? We got a guest speaker coming in. That's just for you. We're going to, we're going to, we're not going to receive an offering. The church will just bless our guest uh, comedian, you know, uh, with a love offering or honorarium, I should say. And uh, I don't want to give him what we bless people with and y'all not in the house. Amen. Right? Okay, we always bless speakers, isn't that right? And so uh, we're generous here at Victory, and so we want you to show up, men, and it's in-house only. We've invited pastors. We have a few already that have responded, and we expect more to do so. But I want the men of Victory to be at the breakfast on Saturday, April the 24th, 9 o'clock in the gym. All of the men at Victory, unless there's some emergency or something like that, I want you to make every extra effort that you can to be a part of the breakfast. It's going to be a, uh, always good food. Isn't that right? Men that usually show up, it's always good food, fellowship. And we bring it, we're bringing Rod Allison in to just minister to us through, through uh, comedy, godly, Christian, word-based comedy. And we want you to be in the house. And we'll also probably have a 10-minute, maybe 15-minute ministry from the Word of God uh, so we can have a complete package. Isn't that right? So men, get your tickets, $6 and six fifty online. And we want you to be a part of the breakfast on Saturday, April 24th. Uh, in the gym of our youth building. All right, you ready to give? Hallelujah. All right, if you're in need of an offering envelope, if you would, lift your hand at this time. Bushes are headed in your direction. And I uh, just see one or two hands raised. And we appreciate your faithfulness in your giving. I'm talking to all of you now, those of you that are watching through live streaming. Thank you for your faithfulness. Many of you still mail in your tithes and offerings. I say that on a regular basis, and we appreciate it so much. And those of you that are giving online or through your phone, etc. All right. Praise God. I think Jelaine Cameron, are you exhorting us tonight? Come on up, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, may I have Exodus chapter 25, and we're going to look at verses 1 and 2, and it reads, Exodus 25, 1 and 2. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, now the Lord is speaking, speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. How should we give? With what? All right. Now we are to give willingly. Now this type of offering that the Lord was requiring from the children of Israel was a heave offering. Not going to get into that. I teach a little bit, not a lot. Uh, <laughs> I looked up the word heave and it means to lift or haul a heavy thing with great effort. Praise God. Y'all got some heavy offerings tonight. Praise God. Now, giving to God is serious business. It's serious. Now, it requires you to be willing to give. Now, if you don't want to give, God don't want it. If you're not willing, he don't want it. Plain and simple. All right. Now, like the Bible says, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. So if you willingly bring your offering, God will bless you. If you don't bring it willingly, don't expect to get anything from God. Because Luke 6, 38 says, give and it shall be given. Put something in, you get something out. 
foot nothing in, you get nothing out. Amen? So give willingly, give cheerfully tonight. I don't care if it's a dollar. I don't care if it's a hundred dollars. I don't care if it's a thousand or a million. You give it willingly and cheerfully and watch God bless you. Those of you that are writing checks, please make them payable to Victory Christian Center. You may abbreviate by writing VCC and seal your envelopes. We don't want nothing falling out. Amen. All right. Just one more thing. Another translation says, bring an offering as their heart prompts them to do. You can give if you want to. Did you know that? You can give if you want to. But you should want to because God has done so much for all of us. We love him. How many of you remember when you were in love with somebody? You just gave and gave and gave and gave. Get in love with God. Watch what he does. Over and above what any human being could ever do that loves you. All right. You like you're ready? Those that you want to come down and worship God at the altar with your offering, please come now. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. We willingly and obediently, we praise you, Lord. We give you glory. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you love a cheerful giver. You love a willing giver, Father. We thank you that you open up to us the windows of heaven's blessings. Father, you rebuke the devourer for our sake. Therefore, Satan, we serve you notice right now. The Lord God rebuke you out of our financial life in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for your divine extravagant favor upon our lives. We thank you, Lord, that surely people will call us blessed. For we are blessed to be a blessing. And Father, we thank you that every need is supplied according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We call it and we believe it by faith, Lord, that there is meat in this house. And there is meat in our individual houses. In Jesus' name, bless these gifts. We give you glory for it. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord of the harvest. Lord of the harvest, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Hallelujah for doing exactly what you said you'll do. Watching over your word to perform it in our lives. Thank you that your word does not come back void, but it accomplishes that which you please. It prospers in the thing where to you sent it. Thank you, Lord, that we're blessed going out and blessed coming in. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We release the angels of God to go forth and minister for us the heirs of salvation. God, we thank you that we'll walk into our harvest. It will come upon us. It will overtake us. We give you the glory for it. We say there's more than enough in our lives. Father, we have all sufficiency in all things. We're debt free by faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you for giving us wisdom for that which you bless us with. Oh God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness in the name of Jesus. Thank you for blessing us in a way where all men will call us blessed. They'll see that we're called by your name, that you are our God. Thank you for the distinction between us and the world. In the name of Jesus, we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. You are our shepherd. We do not want. We give you glory for it. Come on, give me praise tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord of the harvest. Thank you, Lord of the harvest. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated, ushers. Let's receive our gifts.
traded my sickness and pain. I traded my sickness. I'm healed by the stripes I of Jesus. Persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed, and I'm blessed beyond the curse for his promise still endures. His joy is gonna be my strength. Yeah, yeah. Those sorrows may last for a night. Joy comes in the morning. Yeah. Those sorrows I've traded my share. understood what I meant when I talked about we have a guest speaker for the for the breakfast uh, Ron Rod Allison coming in for uh, to minister to us through comedy and when I mentioned about the honorarium you know what I meant I just want to make it plain that when we bring in anybody to minister to us we ought to show up Amen. you know for Rod Allison to come in and minister to just let's say just Throwing out a number, a hundred men, that's ridiculous. Amen. Amen. Absolutely ridiculous. Amen. I mean, if it was ten men, he'd still get the same honorarium. That's how I function. That's what we do as a as a ministry. But you just shouldn't bring anybody in and just a handful of men show up. So y'all understood what I meant, right? Men, you understood, men? All right. Okay, praise God. Just since I needed to clear that up. All right, uh, Brother Jacob, come and minister for five minutes. Come on up here. 
Praise the Lord, five minutes. And uh, you know where the clock is back there, and also there's one right in front of you. And the moment you touch that mic, five minutes begin. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. All right. Thank you, Pastor. All right. Well, we give God the glory. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn with me to Romans 5. These days we go through trials and tribulations. The enemy is here to steal, kill, and destroy. But I like to go through Romans 5. If you are being deterred by the enemy, this may encourage you. As a believer, I hope this will help you. What I wouldn't say, I, I hope, I know this will help you. Romans 5 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God to our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope. But this is what I like most, where Paul says, now we've been justified, we have peace, we've experienced God's grace, but look what he says in three. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character hope. What does that mean? As I said, the enemy is here to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But what he's saying here in verse 3 is that as a believer, no matter what you go through, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the attack, you will not compromise your faith. That's what he means. I gave a plain example in, in the Second Corinthians 12. Paul goes through the same thing. Now, Paul writes Romans 5, and he writes also 2 Corinthians 12. What did he say? He says what? A messenger of Satan have put a tone in my flesh. Like we all. Our tones may vary. Your tone may be sickness in your body. Your tone may be your family going astray. Your tone may be your spouse is not in line with the faith. Your tone may be your job. Your tone may be a series of things. But I leave you with this, the way he answered. He asked God, he says, I pleaded with the Lord three times. Oh God, get this thing for me. Some of us have pleaded a thousand times. But what am I seeing here? God knows what each and every one of us is going through. And his grace is sufficient. So going back to Rome, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, this is what Paul says. He said, I pleaded with the Lord three times. What did the Lord say? In my own words, Paul, Paul, I see what you're going through. I see the pain. I feel the affliction. But let me tell you this, boy. My grace, my grace as your creator is sufficient. And you know why it's sufficient? Because when you are weak in this flesh in which you stay, that's when the power of I, the living Christ, relieves you from that which you are going through. What am I saying here? God is great. The Bible says we have redemption in Christ. God's given us eternal life in Christ. We have the victory in him. And because we have the victory, we press towards the high calling of God. I say this, even the devil is a liar, no matter what we go through. For we have the faith that God has given us liberty. And because we have liberty, Bible says we rejoice in Christ. But not only that, storms and wind may come after you, hitting you. Doing whatever the enemy does. But remember this. Bible declares that we are preserved in him the living Christ. And I like the way Paul puts it. He the Christ in us is the hope of glory. God bless you. Amen. God's grace is sufficient, isn't it? 
Father, guide us tonight, and we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your anointed word as men that need the anointing, and I humble myself under your mighty hand and in your sight. Thank you, Lord, for opening up our eyes, reminding us of things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Uh, I, I want to just piggyback on what uh, our brother Jacob was, was uh, talking about. And, uh, you know, I had a couple messages in here for tonight, and I just kind of was sensitive to my spirit. Let's talk about not giving place to the devil, you know, because he was talking about how the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, God expects us to whip him every time. Amen. I said, God expects us to whip the devil every time. Amen. Period. Ephesians 4, the Bible says in the 27th verse, giving no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. Put in the Amplified Bible, Ephesians 4, 27. Just switch to the Amplified and just take your time in it. But the enemy comes to do several things in our lives if we will allow him to do that. Say, I have to allow it. He comes to influence us in some way or another to remove us from the will of God and from the word of God. Some type of influence could be through your imagination. It could be through suggestion. It could be through a friend. It could be through a movie. It could be through just a thought. But he comes to influence you to move you away from the will and purpose and intent of God. And the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 27, leave no such room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. That's a commandment almost as far as my perspective. And he's talking about how don't go to bed at night. Don't let the sun go down with anger and wrath in your life. Don't give him any such, put it back on the screen, don't give him any such room or foothold. Amen. Go to sleep at night with peace with everybody in your family. Amen. Don't ever go to bed not having spoken a, a, a good night word to your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife. Leave no such room or foothold. He's trying to influence are you here? Amen. Come on, say amen, everybody. Amen. He not only comes to influence, but he comes to oppress. Oppress means to keep weighing against, keep coming against, oppress. That's why Jesus, one of the reasons why Jesus was anointed. Amen. Acts 10, 38, how God did what? Anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? The Holy Ghost and with what? Power. And he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed. Notice the anointing was to deliver people from the oppression of the devil. And the Bible says the anointing abides in you. You have an anointing to stay free from the oppression of the devil. Shout about that, somebody. You have an anointing that if anybody in your home, in your family, particularly you men as the priest of your home, you have the anointing in you to deliver your son, your daughter, your wife, your uh, uh, whomever is living in your home with you from the oppressions of the devil. Amen. And we have to do that, right? God expects us to whip the devil because he comes to influence us in some way. He comes to oppress us. He comes to vex us. You find that all in the Bible, the word vex or vexed. You find it in the word of God. And, and the word vex is almost the same as he uh, referred to Paul being buffeted, being buffeted, struck against over and over again in some type of way. And you think about Lot, how his righteous soul was vexed. You see other, you see, you see in, in the Gospels where demons vexed people. Vex. Vexation is a demonic thing. And God wants us to live above the vexations of the devil and to stop them when we begin to recognize their pull in our lives. Is that right or wrong? And of course he comes to possess us. But that's so, so far and in between that a Christian could ever be possessed. 
of a devil. But every Christian can be influenced. Every Christian can be oppressed. Every Christian can be vexed. And we have to take our authority over the enemy. Isn't that right? Look in your Bibles. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 16. Now if anybody knows anything about whipping the devil, it's God. If anybody knows anything about how the devil functions and operates and et cetera, it's God. Why is that? Colossians 1, 16, the Bible says, For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. They were all created by God, but they were created for God. Lucifer just got messed up. And he became Satan. And Jesus says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. But he was created as everything that was created, was created for God's purpose. Now, if God created Lucifer, who's now Satan, who took one third of the angels with him to this fallen earth, if God created him, then God knows how to handle him. Come on, talk to me. And so none of us should be intimidated by anything the devil brings our way. Not if you're born again. Not if the Holy Ghost lives on the inside of you. Not if there's an anointing on the inside of you. Not if you know greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Not if you know that Satan is actually defeated and God put him down from heaven and God says, now you take authority in this earth. Colossians 2, verse 10. The Bible says, Colossians 2, verse 10, you are complete in him. I'll give them a chance there. (laughs) And you are complete in him. Notice now, who is the head? Who is the head? So who's the him? Who's the him? You are complete in him. Jesus, who is the head of all principality and power. We just read Colossians 1, 16. For by him all things were aided, Right? Whether principals, powers, everything. And by him, uh, or we in him rather, we are complete who is the head of all principality and power. We're complete in Jesus. And Jesus is the head of everything. Come on now. And we are his body. Is that not right? That means we are supposed to pass the car, keep the devil under our feet. We're supposed to rule in life as a king and reign in life. We're supposed to win. Come on. Hebrews 2 verse 14. Hebrews 2 verse 14. The Bible says in Amplified Bible and literally that Satan's been brought to naught, been brought to nothing, zero. When it comes to God, when it comes to the ability of God, when it comes to who we are in Christ, When it comes to our position, our status in God, Satan has been brought to zero. Since therefore these his children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, he himself, Jesus, in a similar manner partook of the same nature that by going through death he might bring to naught. Naught is nothing. Naught is nothing. Naught is zero that he might bring to nothing and make of no effect him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Notice he had it. But Jesus dealt with him and brought him down to nothing. The only time the devil has, has any power or reign in our lives is when we give him place. Are you understanding that? And what did Paul say in Ephesians 4, 27? Give no place. To the devil. Now you know that's true because the Bible says he walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. If he could just devour you at any time, we'd all be out of here. Is that right? Because he hates us because we're made in the image and likeness of God. And he can't get back at God. God kicked him out of heaven. So the next best best thing for him is to get at us. Because when he gets at us, he's getting back at God. But thank God, God gave us authority over the devil where we can represent God as an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ, a priest and a king, a son of God, and say, Father, I didn't let him do it. Father, I tried, he tried, but I didn't let him do it. That's what we ought to say. I see the devil coming. He's trying, but Father... Hallelujah. 
Are you here tonight? God expects us to win. Look at the last words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28. Last words on this earth. 28, latter part of the chapter, 19th verse, whatever it is. We'll find it. Start at verse 19, 18, 19. Go therefore, start at verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, the disciples, saying, what did he say? Read it out loud. All, All authority. What, what, how much of it? All. That means there, there is no more. All authority, let's read on, has been given to me, where? In heaven and on earth. All of it. So what are we supposed to do with it? Next verse. Go ye therefore. Go. Go. And Mark put it this way. You go and preach the gospel. And those that believe on me and are baptized shall be saved. Those that believe not shall be damned. And in my name you cast out devils. Isn't that what he says? Because all authority is mine. I'm telling you, we have authority over the devil, so let's not give him any place. Amen. Let's just keep the door shut in Jesus' name. Amen. And when he shows up, let's just kick him out. Devil, you've been brought to nothing through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have no right here. You have no power here. You have no place here. I refuse to let you in here. Come on now, that's where it's supposed to be. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, you know the scripture. Jesus found the place where it was written in the book of Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the broken heart. Isn't that good that we don't have to carry a broken heart the rest of our lives? To preach the gospel to the poor. We don't have to be poor. Amen. Jesus said the poor you always have with you, but it doesn't have to be you. Amen. He came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And there's an anointing, he says, on me. And guess what? The anointing is in you. Amen. And that anointing is to do the same thing. Go tell people you don't have to be poor anymore. Come to Jesus Christ. Give your tithes and offerings. Obey God. If you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And you are also anointed to heal the broken heart. But notice to proclaim liberty to the captive. Well, if, if we to proclaim liberty to the captive, somebody had us captured. Who put us in captivity? Satan. Who's trying to put you in captivity? Satan. In some shape, form, or fashion, the devil's trying to put you in captivity. And you got an anointing in you to keep it from happening. Shout about it, somebody. He that anoints us is God, Paul said. There's an anointing in you. There's an anointing in us to keep the devil at bay, to keep him in his place. Amen. Amen. All right, now, we're the only force, and I shared this Sunday past. I believe I did. But we're the only force capable of spiritual warfare on this earth, the body of Christ. We're the only force capable of spiritual warfare. We're the only force, we're the only infantry, we're the only battalion that God has on this earth to destroy the works of the devil. Nobody else can do it. The philosopher can't do it. The man that's not born again can't fight the devil, can't whip the devil. We're the only ones. What a privilege! What an honor! Come on now, that's an honor. Amen. Hallelujah, I'm a good soldier. I have the ability to whip the devil. Do spiritual warfare. Amen. And not just for myself, but all of my household. Amen. Praise God. You know God's a household God? I'm getting ready to teach a message on that. He's a household God. At some point in time anyway, better watch my mouth. I'm working on stuff all the time, man. He's a household God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and 
end. God, God is not an individual. He don't want one at a time. He wants the whole house. As for me and my house. We got to start expanding our faith. He's a household God. He don't want any of our, 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 our house running off to the devil and in the world. Amen. Jesus name. But anyway, so we're the only ones that have the ability to whip the devil and engage in spiritual warfare. So we have to know what our arsenal is. See, we have to know. God just didn't, uh, uh, you know, let him come down here and let us be wimps. Let us be run over. You know, Adam didn't have to let it happen. So you have to know what our arsenal is. What, what, what's our weaponry? You know, and in Ephesians 6, you can read all about the, the armor of God and all that. But let's just make it plain, man. We overcome by the blood. The devil hates the blood. The devil cannot do anything. Listen to me now. He can't do anything with the name of Jesus. In my name, at the name of Jesus, every knee bows. Beings in heaven, beings in earth, beings under the earth. Every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? He told the seven sons of Sceva. You don't have a relationship with God. You, you don't know Jesus. But when you know him, he backs you up. You got his name. Whatever you ask in my name, whatever you demand in my name, I'll do it. But the blood of Jesus, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And when Jesus shed his blood, he was given his life. And he's given us the right to that blood, to use it, right? Yeah. When we use that blood, we're, we're bringing the very life of Jesus against the devil. Amen. Everything that Jesus' blood represents is coming against the devil. The late Dr. Sumrall, he always said, he said, Robin, when you're dealing with a devil, start talking about the blood. Amen. Dr. Sumrall, he used to always start singing about the blood before he started casting out the devil. That's right. Oh, the blood of Jesus, he'll start singing. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The devils know what happened to him because of the blood. Amen. And we overcome by the blood. Come on, talk to me. You got to know your arsenal, your weaponry. And secondly, you have to know and recognize the devil, who your enemy is. The enemy is the devil. Know and recognize your enemy. Your enemy is not your husband. Your enemy is not your wife, not your son or daughter, not your employer, not your employee, not the Democrats, not the Republicans, not Bill Gates, not George Soros, not Fauci, not Trump. No, the enemy is Satan. That's who we deal with. Amen. The devil always wants you to get focused on flesh and blood. Amen. He wants you to get wrapped up in what that person said or didn't say. What that person did or didn't do. Right. What that person was supposed to do and promised you and didn't come through. He wants you to get so caught up. He wants us so caught up in flesh and blood till we forget the devil yeah. has been influencing Come on, talk to me, oppressing and vexing in this situation. And we got to get out of that flesh and blood, and we got to walk the floor if we need be, and we got to say the blood of Jesus be against you, the authority of the Great Commission be against you. In the name of Jesus, I come against you. You have to let that person go. They will not be used against me anymore. In the name of Jesus. You got authority, church. Don't give him any place. God's grace is sufficient. And Paul wrote, and I, I, I don't know my chrono, uh, chronological order of the, uh, the books are just right off, my, right off the top. But Paul later on said, be strong in the grace. My grace is sufficient. Be strong in that grace. That grace gives you victory. Come on now. That grace gives you victory. Number three, we have to recognize Satan's works. 
To give him no place, you got to recognize his works. All the ills in this life are the works of the devil. We, we pray in our corporate prayer. We come against human trafficking and sex trafficking. We recognize that's the work of the devil. We pray for marriages, marriages separating, divorcing. That's the work of the devil. That's not one man and one woman hating each other. That's the devil that got in a man, the devil that got in a woman, uh, the devil that influenced. Come on, talk to me. That's the work of the devil. You cannot whip what you can't identify. You got to identify the works. When you start thinking about separation and start thinking about a divorce, you better be still. Amen. Say, who is this? Is this me? Is this the enemy? The Satan? What is this? Come on, talk to me. Amen. And all the other things that are going on that's ill and bad and malicious in our society. We have to understand all the poverty and all the drugs and all the incest and everything else, the abortion, the homosexuality, those are works of the devil. The abortion, oh, that's the devil. And so we have to understand that in order to defeat him and give him no place, we have to recognize his works, right? When you recognize his works, you can say, not here, not here, not here. We're stopping this now. I'm not going to give you two weeks. I'm stopping you now. I'm not going to get you. I'm not going to let you get momentum going. I'm stopping you now. As soon as I recognize it, I'm stopping you now. In the name of Jesus. Just like we teach you feel a pain, deal with it now. Right then. Don't ignore it. And then it gets worse. Cast that devil off your body right then and there. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Amen. Headache, I think I'll go sleep. No, in the, I think I'll put my hand on my own head. Amen. Devil, you loose my head in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cause of this, you be corrected now in the name of Jesus. I don't have headaches. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Tension, go. Tension, go. Pressure, go. Amen. We're Christians. Amen. It works. The name works. The blood works. The anointing works. Amen. Amen. Got to recognize his works. All of these things, you know. So we have to stop seeing the problem and start seeing the source. Tell your neighbor that. Stop seeing the problem. Say, start seeing the source. You know who the source is? Satan. Satan. And Jesus said in Luke 9, 10, 19, and behold, I give you authority. He says over all the power of the enemy, you tread upon serpents and scorpions. Tread upon them. Tread. Walk. Every place the soles of your feet tread upon, he told Joshua. And he says, now you tread upon serpents and scorpions. You put them under your feet. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Got to back you up. Amen. Jesus name. And so the next point here, we, ha we have to be willing to face our enemy in order to, 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 defeat, to defeat our enemy. In order not to give him place, you got to be willing to face him. Amen. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. The Bible says the fear of man brings a snare. Amen. So the fear of a devil brings a snare. And fear has torment. So we have to be willing to face our enemy. First Peter 5, 8, 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion, seeking, uh, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And then the ninth verse says, whom resist. Right? So in order to resist, that means I'm going to face you. 
I'm going to resist you. I'm facing what you're endeavoring to do. Then the Bible also tells us in James chapter 4, submit yourselves uh, therefore to God and resist the devil and he'll do what? He'll flee. Matthew 16, 18, the gates of hell. Upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The gates of hell. Face your enemy. Jesus said the gates of hell. He's saying, in essence, the strongest point and part of Satan, his gates. You read in the Bible about city gates. You read in Isaiah that God will, 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 will break in pieces the, the, the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. Gates were strongholds and, and, and had iron and all kinds of things around them to protect the city. And God says the gates of hell, everything the devil has, cannot stop you and cannot protect him. Shout about that, somebody. Well, he, the devil's tough. No, Jesus tough. The devil's been around so long of a time, he know what he's doing. He got kicked out of heaven. He was, he was created. God knows how to handle him, and he told us how to handle him. Isn't that right? And God's not a liar. Say, I can do it with the help of God, by the grace of God. I can shut the door on the devil. I don't have to give him any place. I can win. Shout about it, everybody. We have to be willing to face him because he's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He's coming to steal your relationship with God. You know, he wants to influence you in some worldly way because he wants to take you away from God, your relationship with God. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you'd rather spend more time doing this. You'd rather spend more time listening to this, watching this. Where in the past, that time, a lot of it, or much of it, was spent listening to the word, praying in tongues, reading your Bible, worshiping God, doing something that shows that your mind is set on things above, not on things of the earth. But the devil began to influence you. Some Christians say, bless their dumb heart. As Christians, there should be a balance. What does that mean? A balance of the world with God? A balance with faith and unbelief? A balance with God and Satan? Today I'll be with Satan. Tomorrow I'll be with God. Today I'll be in the world. Tomorrow I'll be in the church. God wants you in the church all the time. No balance. Balance. Come out from among them. Carnal Christian. Sunday, I'll pick it up if the Lord tells me on separation. Balance. What do you mean balance? A little sin here, a little sin there. A little wine here, a little weird beer here. A little secular music here. A little godly music here. A little dancing here. A little shouting before the Lord here. God says, you lukewarm carnal, I'll spew you out of my mouth. My God, I didn't know I was going to say all this either. I didn't know it was going to be this strong either. I just got a simple little message. The Lord is my shepherd. God is working on us. Oh, God, I said, it's working on us. He's coming back for a glorious church. Not having spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy. Be ye therefore holy, even as I am holy. Holy and without blemish. Talking about balance. Sleep in the bed with a man now, and then I'll just try to be uh, celibate for six weeks, and then I'll go. What do you mean, balance? What kind of balance are you talking about? I better sit down. Somebody come and take. Y'all, 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 y'all acting funny here. They acting funny, Lonnie. (laughs) 
He's coming to steal your relationship. He's influencing you in certain ways to get you away from God. He's oppressing to get you away from God. He's vexing to get you away from God. Say, I'm not going anywhere. Say it like you mean it. Satan, I'm not leaving God. I'm not going anywhere. Shout about it, somebody. You have to face your enemy when he's coming to steal your relationship. Devil, this has been two days I've been tempted to listen to secular music. In the name of Jesus. And just for that, I'm listening to seven CDs by Pastor Gould today. I'm going to pray in tongues for an hour and a half. Come on, shout about it, somebody. Man. He's coming to steal your relationship. He's coming to steal your spiritual strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Trying to steal your strength. How come you don't have joy like you used to? How come you don't smile like you used to? How come you don't shout like you used to? My strength isn't there. How come your strength isn't there? In the fullness of God, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. I've been out of his presence. Been out of his presence. I've lost my joy and my strength. Are you hearing this? Amen. Let's stay with God. Amen. Let's, let's just worship him. Let's pray in tongues more. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Keep your strength so you can face the devil. Amen. All of the Israeli army had lost their strength. One little teenager with strength. Strength in the covenant. Strength in God. Are you hearing this? Amen. He's coming to steal your testimony. He's coming to steal your finances, your prosperity. He's coming to steal your future. Don't let him have your future. Don't let him have your destiny. Don't let him have your finances. Don't let him have your life. Are you here? He doesn't play fair. But thank God God's already equipped us. We got everything we need to put him under our feet to win. Now, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. And we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. He's given us world overcoming faith. Isn't that right? The name, the blood. Hallelujah. You can build yourself up on your most holy faith. Doing what? Doing what? Praying. Praying how? In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you pray in tongues today? So he comes to oppress, influence, and vex, and torment, etc., and even possess that's far and in between. It takes a whole lot for a Christian to ever be possessed. It takes them, you know, trampling on the blood of Jesus. Denying the powers of God. They, they would have already enjoyed the gifts of the spirit and a whole lot of other things, according to Hebrews chapter six. So you can't even think about, you know, uh, that that's you or something like that. And Christians, they don't get possessed very, 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 very often. They get oppressed. They get influenced and they get vexed. But we can stop all three. Shout about it, somebody. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, and we'll close. The Bible says, let's read verse uh, 9, kind of lead into it. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church. Notice the church has an assignment. The manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to whom? 
to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. God expects the church to let the devil know you're defeated. Amen. God's manifold wisdom has given me victory. And I declare to you in Jesus' name, you have no place here. I give you no place. I have authority over you. The blood of Jesus be against you. Greater is he that's in me. You go and I make it known to you, devil. You're defeated and I'm the victorious one. Let's stand to our feet. Come on, let's give him some praise tonight. Hallelujah. Come on. Praise your champion. Praise your, your, your Lord. Hallel Praise your deliverer. Praise your helper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we give you glory. 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 Satan, we refuse to give up our relationship with God. We refuse to give you our future. We refuse to give you our finances. We refuse to give you our destiny. We refuse it. In the name of Jesus, you cannot have our family. We refuse it. Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Satan, I break your influence over our lives. In the name of Jesus, we come against what you've been trying to do in us what you've been trying to get us to move towards that's not godly we break that influence now call it broken over your life in the name of jesus i call it broken in the name of jesus you demonic influence go jesus mighty name Every demonic spirit assigned to harass us, to vex us, to torment us, to oppress us, go in Jesus' name. Go, the blood of Jesus be against you. Every harassing, tormenting spirit, go. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, go! Jesus' mighty name, desist in your maneuvers, your operations against us. Jesus' mighty name, my God, we thank you for victory in the blood and in the name and by the anointing. If you be for us, who can be against us? You're on our side. We will not fear. What can man do unto us? Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it. Satan, you are totally defeated. And we'll walk in our victory by the anointing and by the blood and by the name and by the grace and by the word of God. Father, we decree you are our sufficiency. You are our ability. We are what we are by the grace of God. In you we live and move and have our being. Jesus, you're the vine. We're the branch. We pull our life from you. Jesus' mighty name. Father, help us to stay connected. Help us all to stay connected. Stay connected. Stay connected in the name of Jesus. 
We thank you for it. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Keep us in truth, Father. Keep us in truth. Thank you, Lord. I said Sunday morning that the topic of separation is such a contentious point among believers. Isn't that sad? That me and you would argue over what we should separate ourselves from. And we have the same Bible. And we say we're serving the same Jesus. And we're going to argue, Brother Carr, what's of God and what's not of God. That this must be all right for you as a Christian to do that and, and for me, you know, not to do it. And we're going to argue that we've got the same Bible, the same spirit of Jesus on the inside of us. Something's wrong with that story. The spirit of God brings us to the same mind, the same judgment. We see it the same way. What's righteous and unrighteous, what's holy and unholy, what's God and what's ungodly. So, Father, we thank you for our victory. And we won't give place to the devil with your help. And by the spirit of God, take us from glory to glory. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Thank you that you don't remember them anymore. Thank you, our God. In Jesus' name. Every head bowed. There's anybody here tonight, you, you haven't given your life to Christ and you're ready to do that or you want to be, uh, you want to rededicate your life to God. There's a need to rededicate your life to Christ. You got away from God. Maybe this message tonight has exposed some things that you've gotten away from God. Why don't you rededicate yourself tonight? Why don't you come back home to God tonight? He loves you. He cares about you. I mean, God is all wrapped up in you. Draw nigh to him. He'll draw nigh to you. He loves you tonight. And those of you that are watching by live stream, our, our number on the screen is 704-525-8638. There's somebody ready to receive your phone call if you're in need of a relationship with Jesus Christ or if you need to rededicate your life to God or to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's the same for all of you here tonight. If you need to give your life to Christ, anybody in the house, if you were to die right now, you cannot honestly say heaven is your home. Won't you come down here tonight? If there is something in your life that's separating you from God, won't you come and rededicate? If you are a Christian and you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in a heavenly language, won't you come? And won't you call the number, those that are watching, 704-525-8638. And if there's anyone here tonight, you need a church home and you believe in your heart, Victory Crystal Center is where you should be. And I want you to pick up whatever you brought with you. Come down to the front. And those of you that are watching live streaming, if you would like to make Victory Crystal Center your church home, then you call that number or just go to our website and you can take, you'll find out how to take our new members classes online. All right, anybody in the service tonight? All right, you can lift your heads. Anybody here tonight, you want prayer about this message to be strengthened, to just... You know, just, yeah, I'll leave it like that. Anybody here tonight, just come down, stand on a light-colored carpet. We'll just pray for you. You'll be strengthened in this thing. Walk this thing out the way God wants you to. All right, so everybody's good, right? Somebody's coming? All right, just come on, come on right here. Stand on a light-colored carpet. Anybody else, just come. If there's somebody here tonight, you're just having challenges with the vexation, you know, with the oppression of the enemy. You know, come on down. We, we, we're brothers and sisters, right? We're family. Are we not family? We don't judge another man's servant. Why do you want to take the mote out of your brother's eye or the beam rather out of your brother's eye, the speck out of your brother's eye, and there's a whole beam in, in, in your own eye? Give me ministers. It looks like all ladies here. Let me, as many female lady ministers as we have in the house tonight. All we're doing tonight is 
is agreeing with you for your victory. That's all. That the torments by your stand and our agreement, it comes to an end. Nobody's supposed to be tormented by the devil every day. Nobody's supposed to have just one struggle after another after another. The Bible says the devil left Jesus for a season. Everybody deserves a rest. So are there any others? Anybody else? Now, any first-time visitors here tonight? If you are a first-time visitor, won't you please pick up whatever you brought with you? Come on down to the front. I want to shake your hand and say thank you for being with us tonight. So anyone here for the very first time at this time, won't you come down to the front? I don't see anyone moving, okay? So now, we have a gentleman up here. Make sure we pray. And I believe there's some other gentlemen in here that might need to be down here. You know, sometimes the pride, the arrogance, the, sh the, the shame, the whatever it is. But we, we love you. We all need help sometimes. We all need help sometimes. So, uh, Father, thank you for the anointing, destroying yokes. Thank you for strengthening. Thank you, God, for doing what's needed. We stand with them against the enemy. We bear one another's burdens. So now, everybody in the congregation, stretch your arms out towards them. Start praying in tongues. Ministers, start, start ministering to them. Come on, we're, 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 we're supporting them tonight. Those of you that have joined us through live streaming, let me say thank you. Thank you for being a part of our midweek service. We love you so very much, and I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against every tormenting spirit. I come against every spirit that's trying to influence my brother, my sister from you. Every spirit that is oppressing, every spirit that is vexing. In the name of Jesus, loose them and let them go. Go, loose their mind, loose their lives in Jesus' mighty name. I speak victory into your life. I speak a new beginning. I speak favor and breakthroughs and open doors in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory for that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for joining me tonight, joining us tonight, I should say. Friday morning, we'll have a live telecast. Friday morning at 8, it's time to be healed. If you can join us for that, great. And then on Sunday morning, right back at 10 o'clock. God bless you. We love you so very much. All right. Praise God.